deeply grateful to Rav Sholem Yehuda Fishbein, who is the director of Kashrus in Chicago, and to Rabbi Ari Center, who is the executive director of the Kafke Kashrus organization, for inviting me to speak to all of you. I would like to call this presentation Kashrus Concepts. It's an honor for me to tell all of you that this presentation is being made as a schos l'zeichen nishmas Rab Center. Rab Center, who was the founder of Kofke, devoted his life to elevating standards of kashras. I knew him very well. The Center and the Krohn families go back decades of relationship, and it is my hope that everything that will be gained from this talk should be a schos for his halig and neshama. Anytime you spoke to Rab Anytime you spoke to him on learning, he was always quoting his beloved and his revered Rebbe, Rabbi Yosheb Be'er Salavechik, Zeich Tzadik Levracha. And so therefore, I am thrilled to be able to begin this presentation with one of the most brilliant insights I ever heard from Rabbi Yosheb Be'er. Many of us know the Gemara in Baruchas, Daf Lamed Hei Yom Beis, Daf Lamed Hei Yom Aleph, that says like this. The Gemara presents a stira, a contradiction. One Pusik says, Lashem Ha'oretz Umaloya, that's in Tilim Chavdalat Pusik Aleph. Lashem to Hashem belongs Ha'oretz, everything in the earth, Umaloya, everything that's filled in the earth. And yet, there's another Pusik that says, in Tilim Kuf Tezvav Tezayin, Hashemayim Shemayim Lashem, Hashem, everything in heaven belongs to Hashem. However, Vaha'oretz Nosan Levnei Odom. Earthly things, things that are on the earth, that's given over to man. So the first Pasuk says, Lashem Oretzim Loya, that Hashem owns everything that's in the earth. But the second Pasuk is telling us it's only in the heavens that things belong to Hashem. But in this world, Haaretz, it belongs to mankind. So the Gemara gives the Teretz. And let me show you the brilliance of Rabbi Yashaber, how he picked up on a certain aspect in the Teretz. The Gemara says, Khan like Kasha, it's not a Kasha. Kan koidim bracha, kan acha bracha. The simple way of understanding it is, before the bracha, let's say the apple. Well, that belongs to Hashem. So that's the pshat, Lashem ha'oretz umaloya. He owns everything. But after you make the bracha, oh, then it becomes yours. So now, then, ha'oretz nosan levnei adam, after you made the bracha, it's your apple. But Rabbi Yashabar points out the Gemara doesn't say which is which, kan koidim bracha, kan acha bracha. It doesn't say which one is which. So he teaches just the opposite. Listen how he says. He says, before you make the bracha, then the apple is actually oretz nosan levnei adom. Right? That before you make the bracha, it's a mundane apple. It's an earthy apple. However, after the bracha, oh, then Lashem Aratzim Loya. Then that earthy apple becomes part of the sanctity of Hashem because you sanctified that apple. That's the pshat. The Gemara says, Kan Kodim Bracha, Kan Acha Bracha. And that's what Rabbi Yashaber is saying. Before you ate the apple, it was a simple, mundane, earthy apple. But when you were Makadish the apple, you sanctified that piece of food that you ate with the bracha, then it becomes godly. Then it is belonging to Hashem. That's Lashem Ha'oretz Umaloya. Now the truth is that we take food for granted. Do you know that a study was done recently? You won't believe this. Do you know that Americans waste 27% of the food that's available for consumption? Listen to this. 96.4 billion pounds of the 356 billion pounds of edible food in the United States was never eaten. In England today, people toss away a third of the food that's purchased. In Sweden, a quarter, 25% of the food that people purchase is thrown out. We take it for granted. We live in a world of plenty. As a matter of fact, the Department of Agriculture estimates that if we would recover just 5% of the food that's wasted, we could feed 4 million people a day. And if you were able to recover 25% of the food that's wasted, you could feed 20 million people a day. So we take food for granted. And we don't realize that food is really on a higher madriga. Really, that's a way of connecting to Hashem. And I'm going to show you something that is so incredible. 
Do you know what the Mesha Chachma brings out? That the first mitzvah that Hashem said to Adam Arishan, the first words that he spoke to him had to do with food. Now watch this. The Pesach is a voracious base Pesach to Zion. Vayitzav Hashem alekim ala Adam. Hashem commanded man. Hashem commanded man. Mikol eitz hagon ochel teichel. From all the trees of the garden you should eat. And you know what the Meshach Chochma says? He says, that was a mitzvah. It wasn't just advice. It was a mitzvah. I'm telling you, eat the food. You know why? Lahachis nafsha. You should be sustained. You sustain your body and your soul. And you'll be able to have hanor, just like the Yushalmi says. A person is going to have to give a dim rechashman for everything that in this world he didn't have hanor. And Mesh Chachma writes, if Adam Arishan would have told his wife Chava that this is a mitzvah of Hashem, that we should eat the food of the Eitzagon, he just said that you can't eat from the Eitzadas. He said the negative, but he didn't accentuate the positive and so therefore the Avera was his fault he didn't bring out to his wife that eating was a mitzvah and you know something the first Avera also had to do with food and that's what Hashem says from that tree I told you not to eat you ate so look at that food is a way of connecting to Hashem and that's why we must make sure that it's all the food that we eat is kosher betachlis akashris. Because food is a way of connecting to Hashem, as he told Adam, but it's also a way of disconnecting. Because when you didn't eat what you were supposed to eat, like Adam Arishan, there was a disconnect. And so therefore that's why we have to stress so much that our food should be kosher, because that's the way we're making a connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Now I'll tell you something very interesting. You know, Rav Melech Biedemann, many of you have heard of him. He said something absolutely adorable. And he said something about the simple cup of coffee which we have every morning. You know, you have a cup of coffee. Coffee is bitter. Many people put sugar in it. Sugar is sweet. You have hot water and then you put in cold milk. And look at that. You got something bitter, you got something sweet, you got something hot, you got something cold. And what do you say? Shakoil niyebitvare. Everything that's in existence is only because of Hashem. So when you pick up that cup of coffee in the morning, think about that. Everything that happens, it's right there in that cup. You're making a connection to everything that's going to happen that day through Hashem. Because everything happens through Hashem. The hot, the cold, the bitter, the sweet. Shakoil niyebitvare. Do you ever think of a cup of coffee like that? All of a sudden, food is a connection to Hashem. How could we possibly eat something that's not kosher or doesn't have the best hashgacha? Because this is the way we're connecting to Hashem. What an unbelievable achrayas. Now, there's a famous sefer, of course, Rabbeinu Bahaya, we all know that sefer, one of the Rishonim, and he has a sefer called Kad HaKemach. And he talks about many, many topics. And in there he says something that is absolutely frightening. You know what he says? He says you have to be so careful with the food that you eat because it could have an effect on your soul, on your body, and your attitude. And when somebody is so drawn and so enticed by food, they can do the worst things. And listen now, he says. We all know the tragic story of how the brother sold Yosef. But it seems that as you're reading the story, all of a sudden it seems that there's something a little bit extra. It says, Vayeshvu lecha lechem. They sat down to eat bread. Why is that important in the story? And then it says, Vayisu name they lifted up their eyes. Vayiru, and they saw, Vahine orchas yishma'elim. Here there's a whole caravan of yishma'elim. Take a look. And Bereshus Lamed Zion, Chafei. Why is it telling us that they ate food? You know why? And that's what the Meshach Chochma writes. Not the Meshach Chochma. Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar and the Sefer Kata Kemach. And he tells us, you know why they sold their brother? Because they were filled with themselves. Because they had the food. And when somebody is so filled and satiated with food, it goes to his head. And he can become a Balgaiva. And he feels he can do anything. And they, because they were filled with food and filled with themselves, they were able to sell their brother. That's horrendous. But it was only because Vayeshu Lecha Lechem. And then he says, that's why the Torah tells us, V'yachalta v'savata, when you eat and you say shit, Uveirachta, bench right away. Don't let that food make you a Balgaiva. Make that connection to Hashem. And therefore, that's what food is all about. 
as we said, food is a way of connecting to Hashem. Of course it's got to be kosher. Of course we have to be so careful because we're connecting with every piece of cake, every steak, every chocolate mousse, whatever you're eating, it's connecting to Hashem, you're sanctifying it by making a bracha before and after. So of course we have to be so careful with everything that we eat because that's the connection that we are making to Hashem. Now, we know that kosher food is so available today. Recently there was an article in Mishpacha magazine, Rabbi Wein was talking about the various things that he's accomplished in life. And for a while, he was actually the director of the OU Kashrus division. He took over for Rabbi Alexander Rosenberg, who he revered and loved. And he says about Rabbi Rosenberg that he was smart and he was incorruptible. He always said that Rabbi Rosenberg would have a little sign on his desk, like a paperweight, and it said, Vazokt Gott. What does God say? But listen to what he writes about Rabbi Rosenberg and about food in general. He says, in the little more than 20 years that Rabbi Rosenberg was the kosher's director of the OU, of that division, he built it from 40 mashkichim to 750 mashkichim. From certifying 184 products to certifying 2,500 products. From giving hashkocha to 37 companies to giving hashkocha to 400 and 75 companies. So it's no question, and it's understandable, that what Rabbi Fishman told me today, that if you go to a supermarket, 60% of ev- all the products in supermarkets are kosher today. So we take it for granted. We don't check, because we don't really look into it, because we figured everything is kosher. It's got an OU, I'm okay, you're okay, Kafke, you know, everything, right? So we take it for granted. But we have to realize there's a big achrayas there. And so technically, you know what? You wouldn't believe this. You take a look in the Mishnah Bura. You know there's a simon in Shulchan Aruch, simon Kuf Ayin Aleph. It says, the name of the simon is, Shaloi Linoi Bezoyen L'Oichlin. Don't embarrass food. You have to treat food with dignity. And you know what it says there in the Mishnah Bura? Sif Kotn Yud Aleph, take a look. Isa B'Gemara, the Rav Huna, Seve Rav Huna holds, Maichal Adam, human consumption food, ain't, you're not allowed to give a, an animal human food. Because that's a bizarre, and you're giving it to a lowly animal. On them, Belio Rabba Mistapak, and the Ola Rabba, the Mishim Bura brings, Im Halacha Kiravuna. He's not sure if the Halacha is a Kavuna. Va'ayin Machtas Hashekel, and the Machtas Hashekel says, Dim ain't like Dover Ache, Lahachel, Bene Kol Kiyim Machal Adam, Lukulama Mutter. If you got nothing else to give to the animal, then you could give him human food. But otherwise, food is holy. You just don't give it to an animal. He says, and that could be the heta why we give bread to birds. But really, technically, human food that's consumption, that could be consumed by people, shouldn't be given to animals. You can't lower it down. Food is holy. And if food is a holy and a way of making a connection, you have to be so careful to check the hashkachos and make sure that everything that you and your children and your family are eating are betachlos hakashras. And you know what the Mesil Sisharim says in Perikud Aleph? And this is frightening. He says, When somebody eats something that's not kosher, It brings a tumor into the body, into the heart and the soul of a person. So that the Kedusha of Hashem it removes itself from the human being. If a person doesn't eat kosher food, eat something that's not kosher. So it's worse than doing other isurim because this defiles us spiritually. And so I want to talk about a topic, about a profession which is a wonderful profession. But when I was growing up, there was no such profession. And that's party planners. Now I want to tell you something. Party planners are wonderful people, no question about it. But I have spoken to numerous people in the kashras certification business. And you know what they tell me about party planners? You've got to be so careful, I'll tell you why. You see, normally, until now, we made a bar mitzvah, a bas mitzvah, a chasana, you relied on the caterer. The caterer has a mashkiach. You call a party planner, what is the main focus of the party planner? To make sure they cores good, gorgeous, that the colors match, you know, the, everything that the people are wearing matches the tablecloths, and the cutlery, and the silverware, and all kinds of fishes, and dishes, and sushi, and everything. But you know something? Party planners don't have a mashkiach. 
they're buying the food. Did you ever ask them where they get the food from? Did you ever ask them how the food gets to the caterer on Shabbos or to the shul on Shabbos? Who's warming it up? Nothing against party planners, but if you're hiring a party planner, you got to be sure that it's kosher, the food is kosher, and there's no Averis going on. You're bringing your child, whether a bar mitzvah or bas mitzvah, to Kedushas Yisrael. You want to bring it with food that's questionable? That they were warming it on Shabbos and they could be chilo Shabbos? We can't be doing that. That's not what uh, 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 Simcha is all about. You're having a chasana and you're having a party planner, it's going to look gorgeous. Yeah, no question about that. The flowers will match, you know, will match the color of the, the mother of the bride's dress. Well, wow, that's great. It's beautiful. But this is a home that you're building with Kedusha Tahara. How could the people eat at that place if there's a question of who the, of who the food was brought from? You've got to discuss that with the party planner. That's got to be part and parcel of the discussion. Because we cannot bring our children into Yiddishkeit, into Kedusha Yisrael, or Bar Mitzvah, or Bas Mitzvah, or into a Jewish home when you're celebrating with food that's not Betach Lassakashras. And so let's remember this before I tell you the final story. Any apple that you eat, any steak that you eat, any chocolate mousse, anything that you're eating, it's holy. It's a connection to Hashem. A chas v'shalom can be a disconnect. So I want to end with this fabulous story. And the reason that I love this story is because back in 1964, when Rav Shalom Shadron came to America for the first time and he stayed in my parents' home, this is the first story that I ever heard from him on a Friday night. Listen to this fabulous story. It had to do with Rav Aaron Kalina, the Kalina Rebbe. He had a tish matzah Shabbos, and all the chassidim came, and you know what happens at a Rebbe Shatish, the Rebbe says Teira, they sing smiras, they have food, they shrayim. So they gave the Rebbe an apple and made a bracha. He cut a piece of the apple and he ate it. Everybody was saying, oh, look at that bracha, so beautiful, so holy. But there was a little boy, Yankala, that was sitting in the back and he was thinking, well, what's the big deal? The Rebbe eats an apple, makes a bracha. I eat an apple, make a bracha. Like, why is everybody getting so excited about? And the Rebbe was very perceptive. He saw Yankala in the back. He saw he wasn't impressed. So he calls him up and everybody was wondering, why is he calling the little boy? And he sits down, he sits the little boy next to him, and he says, Yankel, I want to ask you a question. What's the difference between me and you? I eat an apple, I make a brach and eat the apple, and you make a brach and eat the apple? He says, Rebbe, I wasn't going to say anything, but I was thinking the same thing. So the Rebbe says, let me tell you the difference. He says, you know, when I wake up in the morning, I take a look, I see the beautiful sky, the beautiful trees and grass, everything that Hashem has made. And I want to make a brach, but you can't just make a brach for no reason. So I wash Negovasa, then I daven, and then I take an apple, and I make a brach and I eat the apple. Yankala, when you first get up in the morning, you're so hungry, right? And you want to have the apple. But you know, your mother's going to knock your teeth out. That's how Rav Shalom said it. Your mother will knock your teeth out if you eat an apple before you daven. So you also wash Negovasa, then you daven, and then you take an apple, you make the brach and you eat the apple. But listen to the difference. The Rebbe said, I eat the apple, so I should be able to make the bracha. You make the bracha, so you should be able to eat the apple. What a difference. The Rebbe ate the apple because he wanted to sanctify it. He realized that food is a connection to Hashem. That's why he wanted to eat the apple, so he could make the bracha. The rest of us make a bracha because we're interested in the food. Rabbi Sai, this kashris concept presentation is to make us aware that food is a way of connecting. Did it ever occur to you? We daven three times a day to make a connection to Hashem. You know something? We eat three times a day. Every time you eat food, you're also making a connection to Hashem. Let's be cognizant and let's realize we live in a great country of plenty. No matter where you hear this, most likely you live in a country of plenty. Food is not just mundane food. It's a way of connection. That's how Hashem meant it with other Marishan. That's what the first Mishnah, first mitzvah was all about. That's what the Meshach Chochma, the Or Sameach, tells us. Let us elevate our cognizance of the importance of kashras, not only by making the bracha before and after, but being sure that that which enters into our body will make sure that our soul will also be on a higher level. Thank you so much for inviting me, and thank you for listening.